Hello, friends, uh, and welcome uh, to this midweek uh, devotion from First United Methodist Church Conway. Uh, I am Pastor Michael, uh, and in this time together, uh, I want to spend a few minutes looking at something big and important uh, that happened in the first chapter of the book of Acts. It is a relevant and challenging word uh, that comes from our lectionary uh, for the coming week. The disciples in Acts, Acts 1 were living in a time of great change. Something new was happening. They had just witnessed the conquering of death itself uh, and had spent three years in, in the original disciple Bible study, we might say, uh, with the teacher of all teachers. And in that context, they had the gall, the, the unmitigated nerve, to ask the risen Savior this question, Lord, now will you restore the kingdom of Israel? In other words, they still don't get it. They want the Lord, the risen Christ, to confirm their vision of how the world ought to be. Even in light of the resurrection, they ask, Lord, uh, now will you validate our boundaries and borders, our customs, and culture. Lord, now can we go back to the way it used to be? I can identify with that question. I find myself asking similar questions pretty regularly these days. Lord, now will you confirm my way of doing ministry? Uh, the, way, the way I learned it in seminary. Uh, Lord, now will you just make us comfortable and happy Lord, now will you restore the kingdom in the way I think it ought to be? Lord, can't we just get back to normal? How often do we ask the Lord to validate our prejudices, our paradigms, our preconceived notions? That's where the disciples were that day. And now note this. The risen Christ doesn't even answer their question. They ask, Lord, now will you restore the old kingdom? Jesus doesn't even say no. Instead, he gives them a new vision, way beyond the kingdom of Israel, way beyond their preconceived notions of how things ought to be. The risen Christ says, uh, it's in verse 8 of chapter 1 of Acts, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive the power to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Uh, the disciples were trying to move uh, back, but the risen Christ calls them to move forward. The disciples wanted to sit back, uh, build the temple right there, make others come to them uh, as, as they held court with the risen Christ. That was their vision of things. The risen Christ totally breaks open this inward turned vision. He says, I've got another idea. How about this? I want you to be my witnesses first in Jerusalem, right where you are. Then Judea, representing the surrounding area where people basically look like you and think like you. Then Samaria. This represents those who are different. And then to the ends of the earth. It is such a big vision. They were thinking kingdom of Israel. The risen Christ is focused on the kingdom of God for all. Can we even begin to think that big or, or act that boldly? Actually, the scriptures tell us that we cannot do this. At least we cannot do it by ourselves. When we try to live and build community on our own and by our own wisdom, we will always work to make the, the vision and the mission manageable and within our control and within our comfort zone. The Holy Spirit is the key. Uh, the risen Christ says, when you receive the Holy Spirit, then 
you will be able to be my witnesses. Without the Holy Spirit, we become overwhelmed by, by God's vision for us, and we do then tend to turn inward upon ourselves and seek our own comfort. The church does that too often. Friends, I do that too often. Lord, forgive us. Lord, forgive me. And here, my friends, is the great news. Uh, the Holy Spirit did come upon these reluctant disciples and gave birth to the church. We will celebrate that in two Sundays on Pentecost. With the guidance and grace of the Holy Spirit, these same disciples who were once huddled together in fear uh, behind uh, locked doors were then able to go out uh, and to share the good news of God's eternal love through Jesus Christ in new and powerful ways uh, in, in a variety of languages, uh, mediums, places, styles of worship, trusting that the Holy Spirit is big enough to work uh, in all and through all in so many diverse and different ways. As the church, we still uh, get to be a part of this grand and glorious vision. So, we must ask, is that happening? Is it happening here? Is this mission being fulfilled in and through your life uh, and your church? I can definitely say that I am seeing that here uh, at First United Methodist Church Conway. Uh, and right now, especially among the staff, it is such a joy to be around people who are so eager to share the gospel uh, and to find new ways to do so uh, uh, as the circumstances of life demand uh, through online worship, uh, new ways of sharing music, finding new ways to share ministry like our, our drive through food pantry, so many Zoom uh, meetings and gatherings with children, youth, adults. Yes, uh, I'll confess, sometimes we do ask, can't we just go back to the way it was? But then we pretty quickly remember, we remember here, that God is calling us into a time such as this and providing us with the spiritual gifts we need uh, to fulfill this calling. So today, uh, I invite you to confess all the ways that you ask the Lord to restore the kingdom of Israel uh, or to confirm your way of thinking, your level of comfort, and then hear the words of the risen Christ when the Holy Spirit comes, you shall be my witnesses to a much bigger way. You will become a part of something so much bigger. The Holy Spirit will give you the strength. Holy Spirit, come. Amen. Friends, I do look forward uh, to being with you uh, for online worship this Sunday. Uh, it's Memorial Day, uh, Memorial Day Sunday, uh, and we will honor those who have gone before us, died for us, uh, paved the way for us. Uh, we will also explore uh, how the Holy Spirit comes to us in the most personal ways. So I hope that you will join us. Uh, until we gather again uh, in this unique and wonderful way, many blessings.